Wednesday, November 17th, 2021, Memphis would change forever. It was the day an icon in the city and a legend in the music industry was lost. Born into the world as Adolph Thornton Jr., he became known by a number of names, mainly Young Dolph, Mr. Paper Route Frank, and the King of Memphis. On that particular Wednesday on November 17, 2021, Dolph was on a special mission in the city of Memphis. There was this one bakery that he always loved shopping at and supporting, Makita's Butter Cookies. Dolph always showed love and support for the business on a regular basis. Their bond was that of family. So it's really, it's affecting our family now, because we do consider Dolph, you know, anytime you walk into there, you know, walk to Makita's, you consider family. When Dolph came here, he was considered family. Between 10 a.m. to noon, Dolph was riding through the city in his signature camouflage Corvette. Dolph pulled up to the gas station just a short distance away from Makita's to put some fuel in his vehicle. At this point, clips of him like the one at the gas station was already on social media. And sure enough, with his vehicle standing out and easily recognizable, Dolph was already in the sights of his pursuers. Leaving the gas station, he pulled into the parking lot of Makita's a little afternoon getting ready to make his way into the establishment. Little did he know, he was moments away from losing his life. What makes the following events even more chilling is the reason Dolph visited the bakery on that particular day. He was there to purchase cookies for his mother. Without knowing the end was near, he exited his vehicle and entered into Makita's. That was the cue for those plotting on his life. His pursuers pulled up outside and shot up the building. Young Dolph was hit multiple times before they jumped into a white two-door Mercedes-Benz right behind Dolph's vehicle, making their escape. Both men had on gloves and masks when carrying out the murder. Their weapon appeared to be a semi-automatic rifle and a handgun. While the killers made their way from the crime scene, Dolph was fighting for his life. And then you could hear my dad, you know, he was just like, stay with me, Dolph, just stay with me, bro. You know, he kept saying it, so that's when we was like, okay, he was Dolph, so. He was hit 22 times in his forehead, temple, face, back, arms, chest, abdomen, chin, neck, wrist, and shoulder. Officers responded to the fatal shooting at 2370 Airways Boulevard, the site of Makita's homemade butter cookies, at 1224 p.m. to find young Dolph unresponsive at the scene. Paramedics did everything within their power to resuscitate the rapper. But Dolph, who survived two shooting attempts on his life prior, succumbed to injuries, mainly those to his head, neck, and torso. His time of death was officially recorded by on-site paramedics as 12.39 p.m. The world was left in shock. Young Dolph wasn't only a rapper, but a father, a family man, a community activist, and an inspiration to others trying to find success chasing their dreams. The entire city gathered as his camouflage vehicle was removed, almost as a send-off to Dolph, proving his passing to be true. Now one clock stopped, but another was still ticking. Justice needed to be served, not only for Dolph, but for all the lives he touched that were hurting. The police presence was gathered in full force, and the hunt was on. Three days later on November 20th, a break appeared to arrive in investigations when the getaway vehicle was located by authorities in the Orange Mound neighborhood. With the vehicle found, the owner could be tracked down, and evidence led to the woman whose relative borrowed the car and was robbed by the said shooter, who then used the vehicle to take Dolph's life. The 22-year-old relative borrowed the car from the owner and made a quick stop at a gas station off Kirby Road just after 7.30 p.m. She informed police officers two men armed with assault rifles came up and demanded the car. One of them hit her in the face with the barrel of the gun. The owner who was called at the time of the incident states, oh, I really thought they were going to kill her. I mean, that's all I was thinking. I'm going to hear her die right here on the phone. She's going off, you know. She was standing up for herself and even at one point kept them from possibly putting her in the car with them. But luckily, they took the car and not her life. 
the case was growing stronger as the evidence stacked up. On January 5th, another big break came when authorities released information on the suspect for the murder of young Dolph, Justin Johnson, also known as the aspiring rapper, Straight Drop. Investigations further revealed the cruel fate of what happened. Justin was once someone within the camp of young Dolph. A $15,000 reward was issued, and it was only a matter of time that incoming tips led authorities directly to Justin. The strategy worked in spooking him to make a public post on his Instagram account to declare his innocence by deciding to turn himself in at a particular time and date. However, Justin used his post as a distraction to go on the run. Not only that, he was brazen enough to show no remorse for what he was being accused of and released a music video titled Trackhawk on the day he was to turn himself in. Justin taunted authorities and looking into his background, it was clear why. He was no stranger to the law. His legal issues spanned into multiple charges and arrest. In fact, at the time of Dolph's murder, he was already wanted on an outstanding warrant for violation of federal supervised release connected to a previous weapons case. Eyes further focused on Justin as investigators uncovered a past music video for his song, Going Straight In, which was shot at the location where the white Mercedes was found. Even if the video was now removed from YouTube, it was too late, as clips already fell into the hands of investigators. The manhunt was on. Johnson was now wanted for first-degree murder, criminal attempt first-degree murder, and theft of property between $10,000 and $60,000. Six days later, U.S. Marshals captured Justin Johnson in Indiana. And with him, they apprehended Shundale Barrett, who officers concluded was assisting Justin with his escape as he was in the car at the time of arrest. Shundale was arrested and charged with accessory after the fact to first-degree murder. With two now in cuffs, cops released information on another suspect, Cornelius Smith, who they had in custody since December 9th after his fingerprints were found inside the stolen vehicle. On January 19th, Justin Johnson and Cornelia Smith appeared in court for the first time before a judge in relation to the murder of young Dolph. Both men were given time to hire an attorney, but held without bond. On May 27th, they returned to court for a bond hearing, but was granted an extension to gather more evidence to present their case. July 1st arrived with no difference in the previous hearing. Michelle Shaw, the attorney for Cornelius Smith told the courts he was still in process of going through the 800 pages of written discovery along with surveillance of the crime that occurred. Currently, their new court dates are set for July 18th and July 29th for their bond hearing and to present possible new evidence to the court. The world has been tuned in to see justice brought for young Dolph, but the process is slowly moving forward. The latest updates list two more individuals as persons of interest in Dolph's murder, 26-year-old Devin Burns, along with Joshua Taylor of the same age. One of the two, Devin Burns, was apprehended on separate charges of aggravated assault and a theft of property. According to an affidavit on June 6, 2021, a Jeep Grand Cherokee was stolen from Watkins Automotive in the 5400 block of Elmore Road. On June 30th, Memphis police recovered the vehicle on Deer Forest Drive and towed the city lot where fingerprints were lifted from the passenger window and two chemically processed pieces of paper inside were the same as fingerprint impressions belonging to Burns. Even with his possible connection to Dolph's murder and his list of crimes, Burns has been reported to be out of imprisonment. Time will tell what were the involvement of Devin Burns and Joshua Taylor in Dolph's murder, if any at all. There have since been unfavorable updates in regards to a previous detained suspect, Shundale Barnett. A warrant for his arrest is currently in effect after he was released from custody with authorities being unaware of his whereabouts and what appears to be a miscommunication or error in his release. His charges under the warrant have been updated to first degree murder, accessory after the fact, attempted first degree murder, and theft of property. It has been approximately eight months since the world lost young Dolph. The pain is still healing and may never heal given just how much of a staple he was to the city of Memphis. 
the music industry, and the world. Even if gone, his legacy lives on in the impact he left on the world, his significant other, and kids. As the case runs its course, may justice be served.